just a quick video on how booleans are stored into memory on C++. So if we had a boolean, we'd declare one like this. So you'd have bool, which is the name of the boolean primitive data type in C++. Then you'd have the name of the variable. So I could have something like it's raining like this. And then when you put equals, what you can do is you can set this to true or false like this. So the first part here, this bool part, basically it reserves one byte of memory to store our boolean. And although we only need one bit, since we're just going to be storing a 0 or a 1, memory can only be addressed through bytes, so we have to use up an entire byte for it. It's kind of a waste, but that's just how it works. Then when we have this is raining part, what will happen is that address in memory is noted down with this is raining variable, so we can call this whenever we want and access the data at that memory. Then we have is false like this, or we could have is true like this. And what happens is, and this true or false will get converted into either a zero or a one that gets stored into the memory. So if it's true like this, it will be converted to a one. If it's false like this, it will be converted into a zero. That's what gets stored into the memory. You could also write in an integer like zero or one here as well. It doesn't really matter. Um, at the end of the day, what the number is what gets stored into the memory. So um, let's have a look at this. So what I'm going to do is, oh, by the way, you can also write them in an expression if you want. So if I had something like um, two is positive like this, um, and then I put something like equals two is greater than zero, this, this expression right here will evaluate to true because two is greater than zero. So that will get converted into true, which is then stored as one into our memory. So now I'm just going to show you a demo of this. So if I just copy that and paste it into here. So again, don't worry about this function right here. It just prints the contents of our memory block. But what this does is we have this boolean, it's raining, and we set this to true. Then it just prints out its address and its size. And then it prints out the actual um, boolean value, it's raining. And this bool alpha that we just fed it before, just make sure that it prints out as true. Because normally we just print out the value, which is one, but it, we want to print it out as true. So that's why I've set this thing up here. That's, that's all that does. And then we just print out the memory blocks using our function. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to compile this and run this. So if I open this up in the terminal, and then just do g plus plus dot slash demo dot cpp dash o dot slash demo and then so that's been compiled now and if we run this now we can see that we have an address in memory right here and the size of the boolean is one byte the value is true and we can see that one right here has been stored so it's a, it's in the last bit where we have our one or zero stored again it's a waste to use the entire byte but that's just the way it works um so if i were to change this to false and save that and then if i just recompile it and run this we can now see that the value is false and zero has been stored here instead and again like i said before you can have an expression so i could have something like two is greater than zero and um if i compile that and then run this we can see that one gets stored because this will evaluate a true which is stored as one um in addition to this i could just put the number straight in here like this so we've just put a one into here and oops need to compile again and then if we run this now we can see that it comes out as true and that's because the is raining variable is a boolean so the the one that is read from the memory byte right here it's been interpreted as true that's what's been displayed so that's just a no basic overview of how c++ stores and reads booleans from memory